and welcome back. Halfway point, let's do this. Let's see a real example where we talk about a direct map cache and poke at it with requests and have some hits and some misses and misses with block replacement and understand the value bit and actually put it all together with an example. It often doesn't ground itself until this lecture. Hope with this lecture, feel free to walk, you know, watch this at half speed, you'll get this. So this is an example of a direct mapped cache. Let's do this. Okay. Boy. Guess what? Same problem I had before. 16 kibby bytes of data. We should, we should, that was the last lecture we ended with that picture. Forward blocks. Again, see the same thing. We're going to work out the height with an area. We did this already. We already worked out those bits in the last problem. I'm going to re re read four addresses. 14 uh, in hex. 14, 1C, 34, and 80, 14. What happens? That's what I'm going to do. And now you'll see how to do every single thing. We'll break it all up. We'll do this for you. And here's the memory values. By the way, just to let you know, we're going to just put some values. That, you know, whatever A is, these are words wide, okay? These are words here we're talking about. So A is some value of words. Not This doesn't mean A, the hex value. A means that lowercase a means some value of uh, that's that we're going to label A. And again, A through D is the lower side. And then in the 30s here, in terms of the address, it's E through H. And in the 80, kind of 8,000 E range, it's going to be I, J, K, and L. Okay? You're going to see why we choose those values in a second. Here we go. Here's my four values. <clears throat> 14, 34, 1C, 80, 14. Write out the 32 bits. Draw your columns. Where's your T? Where's your I? Where's your O? How much is it? We talked about it before. There's 14 bits for my cache. Four bits are my offset. That's one of 16 different bytes. 10 bits for my index. That's one of 1,024 different rows, different blocks. So we already know. And here, here's my 10. Here's my four. Then how many is here in my tag? Well, if it's 32 bit wide, our, you know, risk 5, 32, this is 14. That must be an 18 bit. Okay, tag. So we kind of know that from before. And by the way, notice, by the way, here, look, the tags are all, this is all zeros. That's a zero. That's a zero. That's a zero. That's a two. So let's remember that for the future. They have kind of, the, of if, I'm, if the range is in the 80s, my tag's not going to be a zero. The other guys are in the low side of memory. This is in the higher side of memory. Um, my indices are, look, okay, that's like, that's a row. That's row one. That's row one. That's row three. That's row. So already kind of seeing this, I'm going to be poking at this in row one and row three. And these are the different columns I'm getting. That's a four. That's a 12. That's a four. Okay, that's a four. By the way, what, why is, what do I know about this? All these are zeros. I'm probably reading words here. If I'm reading words, if you remember the picture I showed you a second ago, I think I, watch, these were word wise. This is four bytes wide. So if I'm only reading load words, you know I'm going to be word aligned in my memory axes, which is why all these guys are zeros. That's pretty cool. Okay. So all this starts to make sense once you play enough with it. Here's my picture. Beautiful. There's my val. Oh, I need a valid bit. What do I reset my valid bit for? Yes, they're all zero. Temperature. Here we go. What's my temperature in my cache? Freezing cold. Empty. Nothing there. Valid bids telling me nobody, nobody's ever visited this, visited this guy before. It is. It is literally. It's got that. It's got the new cache smell. I just cracked it open. Like, tennis. You ever open like a tennis? I have one here. I'm pulling this out. You ever open this guy? I'm gonna open the thing. I get that new tennis ball smell. Okay, that's a little weird, but I usually do that when I open my tennis ball bags. I got my got my new cache smell here. Okay, here we go. Ready? Having some fun. I'm just trying to make this fun for you guys. All right, let's do it. We got four reads to do. Remember, no writes here. I'm just doing reads, and it's simple. Direct map is the simplest kind of cache. Still, there's complexity to it, but this is the simplest kind of cache without before we add more layers to, to complexity. I'm reading memory address 14. I break it up. What do I got? I got a zero. I got a one. I got a four. And by the way, just so you know, just so you know, because I have four bits here in my offset, this hexadecimal nibble is my offset instantly. And this, because I have, this is 10, I think we said 10 bits, right? A thousand rows. Well, 10 bits is, is kind of like, well, it's like this and then like half of that. So just in the future, if I, I can almost read directly what my index is by reading kind of eight to 10 bits here, which are the lower two hex digits nibbles, lower two hex nibbles, and then half of the other one. So let's just give it a little taste of that. Okay. So what happens? 
I first gotta figure out what row I'm in. This is why we always start with I. I think I mentioned that last lecture or two lectures ago. We start with my I. What row am I in? I look up my index. I'm in row one. What? Before I tell you what's gonna happen, see if you can predict what, what, what the algorithm should be doing. What does it do next? Can you, can you figure it out? You're right. I look at the valid bit. Now we gotta check that first. I don't even, okay. This, this would be a, a great question on an exam. I like that. Is the next thing you do if you look at the index the tag? No. If the valid bit's wrong, if the valid bit is not wrong, zero, that tag could be garbage and might actually match my tag, taking me down a path of code that I wanna be in. That's the wrong thing to do. Check your tag first. Check your tag. Let's go back. Check your valid bit first. I have to do this. Check your valid bit first. When it's zero, it's not valid. So, cache miss. Had to do it. Just had to do this. We're going to call it. We're going to learn later. This is called a compulsory miss. I, I don't want to teach you that word yet. I'll teach you that word in a moment. But it's like, I got to take the miss. When I got a, when it was a zero valid bit, I got nothing to do but a miss. There's no way that I can have a hit there. So, I load the data in. Well, how much? When you're going to Sacramento, you might as well get some more stuff. Folks, what kind of, what, what kind of uh, locality we're working with here? Temporal or spatial? Both. It's a cache. I'm remembering the guy I just visited. That's the temporal part. And I didn't just load a byte. I loaded the byte and a word. Actually, not load a byte and its neighbors, a word. And their neighbors, f three more words. So there is some spatial locality I'm trying to exploit here with this wider block size. Okay. I set my, notice this, ooh, I've got to set my valid bit. Don't forget to do that. By the way, if you're implementing a cache ever in hardware, you forget to set your valid bit, you'll never have any hits because it always be, you'd always think it's cold when it's actually warming up. So make sure you set your valid bit. And what's last? What's the next thing you do? You got to return something. It's a load word. Who are you returning? Well, this value of four says, look up here and grab the B. And I return B, okay? This is, these are bytes zero through three, or that A, A encompasses this whole thing is, this is, I always draw these dotted lines. This is four bytes in here, or a word. If I'm, if I'm loading a word, I'm gonna load either this word or that word. It's gotta be, it's gotta be word aligned. So I'm loading B because I, I kind of ignore, in a way, I kind of ignore those bits because I'm loading words. I ignore those bits. That tells me the number starting from zero of the word I'm grabbing. If it's all zeros, it's A. If it's zero, one, it's B. So in a way, you can actually look at this and, and if I'm loading words, I ignore those lower bits. Just FYI. So I return B. So I, had, I got a cache miss, loaded the block up, and returned to B. That's the first request. I got three more. Let's do it. Read one C. Okay, what do I do? Again, this is gonna seem very boring once you've done a couple of these, but for now, let's go slowly. Well, divide one C up into the bits, what's my tag? Zero. What's my index? One. What's my offset? 12. Okay, so think about that. As we move forward here, I check, I go to my, I take the index, I take the little orange label, I say, go to my index. Always the I first. It's I-T-O is actually I process. Check my index, actually I-V-T-O, really. Ooh, I-V-T-O is the new mnemonic. I need a new mnemonic for I-V-T-O. Index. Okay, got that row. V for valid. Then I tag. Hey, the tag matches. This means I read this block. I read somebody from this block recently and nobody else, and no other color did I read since that one. And I don't know how long it's been there. It might be really dusty and have cobwebs, but I haven't read anybody else since I read that one. So that's pretty cool. Um, tag matches. Next thing is you know, I, V, T, the T's there, and the O. Check your offset, offsets goes to go grab C and go grab the last word in that block. And there's your D, return your D. So we return a B and a D, we're doing pretty well. We had one miss and we got a hit. I love the caches, already we're saving our time. I didn't have to go to Sacramento because when you went to Sacramento, you brought your neighbors. I brought A, B, C, D, you only wanted B last time, but I brought A, B, C, D, guess what? Now I wanted D, I love this, this is just great. All right, here we go, this is gonna be trouble now. 34, okay, let's try it. So first thing, divide the bits up, and I already can see there's some problem. There's a, my index is a three. I've never visited three before. So that's the same situation. We can go faster. I've never, I've never seen this in before. It's not valid. I load no valid data. I load the guy in, uh, <clears throat> load the cache block, set valid, look at my offset, return my F, and I move on. So we've, we've kind of seen that case before when we did the first one. Here we go, they're excited. 
8014, here we go. Let's try it, okay. Uh oh, 8014, that looks like, <gasps> this looks like a whole different a cash number. I can tell that because the tag is different. That tag is my cash number. So we first go check my index, IVTO. Index is the second row or index number one. Has my valid, check data is valid. So that's the second part, V, T, check my tags. Tags don't match. And these are only reads for now. So this is a copy and because I'm only reading, never writing, I can just throw this away. That's the key thing. We're going to get this more. Wait, wait, wait. When I reveal the hood, reveal the simplicity, we were in a little rubber room for now. Once I make these writes, well, what if I've had this right and it's not the same as memory? What do I do there? Can I throw it? I can't throw it away because that's the, the most recent data is in the cache. Not, all those th complexities we're not even talking about now. So for now, I just throw that away. I got to throw that away. It's a cache miss block replacement. I got to load in whatever that block is, whatever those 16 bits were, those four words from memory and replace ABCD. If you remember that before, it is IJKL. I've got an offset. And again, set my update the tag to, don't forget, um, by the way, you gotta make sure to update the tag. Don't just update the valid. Make sure to update the tag with the, if there's a new tag, put your new tag there. Otherwise, that'll be all wrong. That would be really bad if you didn't update your, your tag. Um, it would think it's the wrong place and that would be really inconsistent. And now go to my offset, IVTO, what's the last guy? O, offset is four, grab my J, return J. That's not bad. That is not bad for four things. Okay, here we go. Now, okay, this is one of those cases, almost like a, a clicker pair instruction question. <clears throat> what if I gave you, and the value of values could be A, B, C, D, E, up to J, K, L before, 30, okay? And, and I'm gonna ask you, what if you read a 1C? So I really encourage you very strongly to pause it right now, pause the video, try to do a read of 30, of ad address at 30, and read it address 1C. And we'll come back in a second. And welcome back. See how I, I paused, pretending like I was, I paused. Here we go. All right, 30. We're gonna do it together, together. Here we go. Watch, I'm not even gonna, I'm gonna stay on this page. I'm not even gonna need any help. There's nothing on this page. I'm, not, I'm doing it from the time. Okay, Dan said, okay, Dan said IVTO. IVTO. I, there's my three. So I go here, my three. V, valid, yes. T, that's a zero. Is that the same as that one? Yes. O, oh, I think I return E. I'm feeling pretty good. So this guy was return E, okay? How about nothing, and nothing, I don't change anything. I actually don't update at all, I just return E. Cash hit, best possible case. One C, divide it up. I, V, T, O, index one. Go back here, so we go to my one. V, valid, yep, valid. Tag, zero. Oh man, what's the tag there? Are they the same? That's not so good, not the same. So cache miss block replacement. I gotta swap it out. Do you remember what was in that first guy? I believe it was A, B, C, D. So then I go here and, by the way, this was before. I think I asked this before. <laughs> Maybe I did, I don't know. Uh, I, I want a, I wanna ask, and I think it's gonna be there. This is gonna be cross it off A, cross it off B, cross it off C, cross it off D, cross this off, write the zero there, and you wanted the 12, and that is, I'm counting by this guy, you wanted the zero, one, two, three, the last one, and I think you return a D. Let's see how we did. So I think, what did I say? I think we returned an E and a D. I think that's what we did. Let's try it. Okay, what we get? Hey, I return an E, return a D. There's my values, E and D. Huh, what the thing, and that perfect, and then that's it. That's not too hard, that's not too hard. If only there were a cache simulator that existed out there in the real world I could just play with and explore. Oh, I wish, it's just too bad that no one has written a simulator of a cache to, yeah, well, I guess, I guess, I guess there, one doesn't exist out there. It's just too bad that we don't have a cache simulator. Oh well, well, and on a sad note, no cache simulator out there. 
as far as I know. See you at the next lecture.